Today in this 2017 Chevrolet Colorado, we'll be having a look at and showing you how to install the Roadmaster Automatic Battery Disconnect with Switch for towed vehicles with a supplemental braking system. Part number RM-766. Now the reason you're gonna want this battery disconnect over other options on the market is because it's so simple to operate. Just a simple push of the button, you can reconnect your battery or disconnect your battery. You don't have to go underneath the hood, use any tools to disconnect your battery or open the hood to operate a switch. This is all done from inside the cab of your vehicle, which makes it a very simple process. As you can see here, our battery is connected because our dome lights on in the vehicle. When I press the button, we'll hear the click and then we lose power. You can tell by the dome light going off. When I press the button again and reconnect our battery, after a few seconds, once the computer system in the car reboots itself, you'll see our dome light kick back on. Here's what it looks like underneath the hood. We have our solenoid here with our two battery cables. One connects directly to the vehicle's existing battery cable, and the other one will connect to the main fuse box. This goes in between it to kill power to the vehicle. Now we have two wires that'll go inside the firewall through this gray duplex wiring and those will connect with our switch. Those are the only connections we have inside the vehicle. There's a white wire that comes off of here, which we need to attach to a ground. I have our white wire attached to the negative terminal or battery, which goes directly to a ground point. Great thing about this battery disconnect kit is that we have a variety of options in order to mount our solenoid. In our particular application here, I use the provided self-tapping screws to secure it directly to the sheet metal of the vehicle. We also have nuts and bolts that are included, so if you wanted to attach it to a piece of plastic or another option, you can secure it with the nuts and bolts if needed. This battery disconnect kit is a great option for vehicles that require the battery to be disconnected when the vehicle is being flat towed behind a motorhome. It works great for all vehicles that have a 12 volt battery system that only have a single battery. So this is a great option for most gasoline powered vehicles. If you have a diesel powered vehicle, in most instances, you have dual batteries and this kit won't work for that. And now on the trigger wire circuit that initializes the solenoid to open or close, we have a seven and a half amp fuse in a provided fuse holder to help protect the circuit. Now that we've gone over some features of our battery disconnect, we'll show you how to get it installed. Right, we find ourselves underneath the hood of our Colorado on the driver's side of the vehicle. We need to find a place to mount our solenoid. We can mount this to a metal surface using the provided self-tapping screws. We wanna make sure that we have a sufficient amount of room for our cables to reach our battery. So right in this area here will be a great spot to mount it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take our solenoid, line it up to an area where we can easily mount it, and I'll take a marker and make a couple marks so I know where our screws are gonna be. Now I'll take a small drill bit, go where we marked, and make a pilot hole. Okay, with our pilot holes now made, we can take our self-tapping screws. These are a 3 8 head, and we can secure it to the body of the vehicle using these screws. Okay. That's a nice solid mount and is not in the way of anything underneath the hood. Okay. We went ahead and routed our wires to where they're going to hook up. Our gray and our white wires leave our solenoid and go underneath the hole down for our battery and go behind it. The gray colored wire is gonna go inside our firewall to hook up to our switch, and our white wire we're gonna hook up to the negative terminal on our battery to act as our ground for the solenoid. Now we'll take some wire strippers and strip off a little insulation from the white wire. Take our ring terminal that comes with the kit, stick it onto the wire, crimp it into place. There's a 10 millimeter nut right here on our negative terminal, which goes to our ground. We can remove this nut. Place the terminal over that stud. Reinstall the nut. 
Now we need to disconnect our negative terminal from the battery itself. We'll do that by loosening this 10 millimeter nut. Wiggle it off and we'll set it down here to the side. Now that we have our negative battery cable disconnected, it is safe for us to make our main connections to our positive battery terminal side. We'll find that underneath this cover. We will remove this cover by using a flathead screwdriver and prying up on a tab on the side. So this is our positive battery cable. It goes over to our main fuse junction right here. We need to disconnect it from that by removing this 13 millimeter nut. And we'll lift the cable off. Now the cable that is labeled battery cable from our solenoid will be the one that will connect to this stud. Now, in order for us to be able to close the door, we will need to notch this plastic cover right here so the cable has a place to sit. Let's use a pair of snips. Cut a notch into it. Place our cable on. Now we have one extra step that we need to do for this particular application. You may not need to do this depending upon your setup that you have on your vehicle. This yellow wire here, and this powers our 12 volt power outlet that we have installed inside this vehicle, which powers our supplemental braking system. When our battery is disconnected, our braking system will no longer be getting cap power, so we have to relocate this. Not a big deal. We'll just take off this 13 millimeter nut, take this cable off, set it aside for right now, and reinstall this nut. We'll reinstall our nut for our cable that's labeled battery cable now. Now we'll take our heat shrink tubing and slide it over our remaining cable that's labeled battery post. Just slide it down out of the way for right now. We'll take a bolt, one of our star washers, this is going on the factory battery cable. We'll take our cable from the solenoid, place it on. The yellow wire for our 12 volt outlet inside the vehicle, place that on as well. Our final star washer, and we'll thread on the nut. Now we'll take a 13 millimeter wrench, hold the bolt still while we tighten the nut. Now that our cables are connected, we can slide our tubing down to cover up all of the exposed metal. This will keep a short circuit from happening if it grounded out. You will have to work it over the stud a little bit. Okay, now that we have it fully covering our connection and all exposed metal, we can use a heat gun to shrink down our tubing. A heat gun is ideal because it applies indirect heat and we don't risk burning any of our connections. Now that we have it shrinked down, this is gonna prevent our connection from touching any metal, such as our battery hold down and causing a short or prevent any corrosion from occurring from any moisture getting inside. Now we're gonna to need to cut another notch on our fuse box area for our cable to have room for the lid to close. Yeah, we'll test this out to make sure it's gonna work. We'll make a notch on our lid too to help get extra clearance. We'll now take our cover, slide it over, and close it in the position. Okay, our gray wire that we're going to run through the firewall to hook up to our switch goes behind our battery, goes behind our master cylinder, and then there's a grommet in the firewall. We already had a couple wires passing through the firewall for our breakaway switch and our 12 volt outlet kit for our braking system. So we ran our gray wire through the hole that's in the grommet that we made. 
we just poked a hole through it with a screwdriver. So here's where our wire comes through the firewall, the grommet right above our steering column. Now we're gonna need to find a place to mount our switch. On this lower dash panel, below our steering column, right below our four wheel drive and our headlight switches will be a great spot. So to remove this panel, we have two seven millimeter fasteners to remove. Then we can grab our panel, pull back, And now that we have our panel down, we'll disconnect our headlight and our four-wheel drive switch so we can swing it down out of the way a little more. Each one of our connectors will have a tab you push in on and then pull back and then the wiring comes out of the plug. And now we'll drill a hole to mount our switch. We'll do it right between our headlight and our four-wheel drive switch underneath. And now we'll use a step bit to enlarge our hole. And we'll just go to the size indicated in the instructions. Okay, this is our switch. We have a nut on the back that we'll remove. Now we can take the switch and push it through the hole that we drilled. Okay, now that we have that pushed in all the way, we'll take our nut and screw it on the back of our switch. This will just help secure it in place, even though it's already a very tight fit. I took a marker here and marked out the area where our switch is going to be. Now, the reason I made this mark is so we can cut this section out so the back side of our switch where the terminals are don't make contact with this metal which would defeat the purpose of the switch. It would constantly be switching itself because it would be turning this metal into a switch by grounding out. We'll remove this panel by taking out the four 10 millimeter bolts so we can cut it outside the vehicle. We have it in a vise now just to hold it still. You can use a pair of tin snips to cut this out, a grinder, I'll use a rotary tool. Whatever you have, this is pretty thin metal, it will cut pretty easy. Now we can reinstall this panel. Okay, now we're gonna measure off how much of our wire that we're gonna to need to connect to our switch. Right about here will give us plenty and still give us room to disconnect this panel if we ever need to. So we'll cut off the excess. Now there's two wires inside of here. So we take a utility knife and we'll cut back on the sheathing a little bit. But to cut back, be able to expose the two wires. To cut off the sheathing. Now we'll strip back some insulation from both those two wires. Now we need to connect these two wires to the back of our switch. It doesn't matter which color wire goes where. We'll take a Phillips screwdriver, loosen up our set screw, insert the wire into the hole, then we'll tighten the set screw to clamp it into position. And we'll do the same for the other wire on the other terminal. Okay, now we can reinstall our panel making sure we plug back in our headlight switch and our four-wheel drive switch if our vehicle is four-wheel drive. Okay, now we're underneath the hood again. We'll open up the fuse holder on our solenoid and install the provided seven and a half amp fuse. This protects our solenoid and we'll close the fuse cover up. And now we can reconnect our negative terminal to our battery since all of our connections are made. And that completes our look at and showing you how to install the Roadmaster automatic battery disconnect with switch for towed vehicles with a supplemental braking system. Part number RM-766 
on this 2017 Chevrolet Colorado. Thanks for watching. Click the link in our description below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com. And leave us a comment if you have any questions.